Hurd & Co. was a firm of auditors, located in Melbourne, Australia. Michelle O'Loughlin is a senior auditor at Hurd & Co. Michelle is in charge of the audit for a major client of the firm, Preble Sports Store. Michelle works closely with Jenny Cofed. Jenny is Hurd & Co.'s audit partner. Hurd & Co. is dependent upon the continuance of Crapple Sports as an audit client. Jenny, I want to give you an update on Crapple Sports Store. Yes, I'm glad that you're handling that client. Crapple Sports is a really critical part of our operation, as you know. Well, I have commenced the audit. Yeah, I've noticed. How's it going? No problems so far. I just need to check up on a couple of things with you. Sure, let's hear it. The client Crebel Sports Store is a successful sporting goods retail outlet. Richard Burden is the Managing Director of Crebel. Richard has held this position for over 20 years. He has a strong personality and exerts influence on Crebel's Board of Directors. On Richard's instigation, Crebel is expanding its operation. The store is currently undergoing major renovations and extensions. Richard has worked hard to build the firm from humble beginnings and is well respected in the local community. Jenny Kofed, the audit partner at Hurd & Co, is a friend of Richard Burton. They are both members of the same golf club and play regularly on Saturday mornings. Michelle is a committed employee of Hurd & Co and often works late. To get home, Michelle has to drive past Richard's house. One night she notices that Richard is having more renovations done to his home. There is a Footscray construction truck parked at the front delivering billing materials. On another occasion, Michelle drives past Richard's house and again sees the same truck. This time, there are tradesmen working on the house. Michelle continues her year-end audit work for Krebel. During her visit to Krebel, she obtained copies of the tender submissions for the renovations. Currently she's reviewing the documents and notices that Footscray Constructions was the most expensive tender submission. She also finds that the minutes of the Board of Directors meeting noted that Richard convinced the Board to accept Footscray's tender based on their reputation. Hi Jenny, I was hoping to have a chat with you regarding the end of your audit for Crevel. Come in, what's up? I have reviewed the tender submissions for Crevel's renovations and noticed that the selected tender, Footscray Constructions, was the most expensive submission. Yeah, go on. Well, I recall when the renovations took place at Crevel that the building company, Footscray Constructions, was also renovating Richard's home. I observed this on more than one occasion. So what's your point, Michelle? I am concerned that there may have been some improper conduct by Richard. The minutes of the Board of Directors meeting outlined that Richard, despite their high price, convinced the Board to accept Footscray's tender based on their reputation. Well, I'm sure there's a perfectly le legitimate explanation for this. Besides, even if there was impropriety, what could the firm do about it? Michelle continues to ponder about the issue and decides to share her dilemma with the audit manager. Together they've identified the need to prepare a guidance statement for the firm. Michelle calls a meeting with the team. <laughs> Our audit manager has requested to prepare a guidance statement for the firm. To do so, I thought it would be good to give you an update on Crevel's audit which prompted the need for the firm's guided statement. Crevel's audit was progressing well until I noticed some anomalies. It involves the general manager, Richard Burton. Richard recommended to the board to accept the bid from Footscay Construction, which happens to be the most expensive. The bid was for Crevel's shop renovation and extension. In the meantime, Footscray Construction is also carrying out construction work at Richard's house. I have spoken to Jenny about this, but she didn't seem too concerned. Excuse me, Michelle. It looks as though there might be some improper conduct from what you've described here. Well, that is what I want you folks to explore as part of your training. By the way, our audit manager suggested that we need to revisit the organisational structure prepared by the audit partner, which you were shown during your induction. So let's look at it again. Like most audit firms, Heard & Co has a number of professional staff members. The roles you are seeing on screen constitute our audit firm. 
Let's start with my role. My role as audit partner is to forge client relationships at the highest level. I am responsible for reviewing the audit work and resolving significant issues arising from the audit. As such, I am responsible for signing off on the audit report. And upon completion of the audit, I approve the billings to the client. It is important for you to know that at the end of the day, the ultimate responsibility for everything related to the audit report rests on the audit partner. Consequently, the audit partner attends the annual general meeting where the annual report is presented to shareholders and the audit partner answers any questions about the audit. As you can see, the audit partner has a number of key staff members who ensure that the client's audit is done in accordance with the correct audit practices and procedures. First, let's look at the audit manager's role. It is the role of audit managers to maintain close contact with clients. The audit managers are responsible for the direct supervision of an audit engagement. They review all audit work in detail and if they encounter any problems that they cannot resolve, they talk to me as audit partner to seek my advice and assistance. The audit managers are also responsible for preparing the billings to the client, which would be first submitted to me for approval before sending out to the client. Directly under the audit managers are audit seniors or supervisors. The audit seniors are directly responsible for planning the audit and they perform all facets of audit work, but they have audit assistants to support them in these tasks. Therefore, the audit seniors are responsible for their supervision and provision of on-the-job training. Another critical role for the audit seniors is that they are held accountable for reviewing their assistants' work. You can see that all these roles are interrelated and each one depends on the performance of another. Now let's look at the role of audit assistants. The audit assistants are what we call the juniors of the firm. If you haven't already noticed, like most audit firms, Heard & Co recruits graduates from universities to fill the position of assistants. The audit assistants are responsible for planning portions of the audit. These portions or segments are often assigned to them by the audit seniors. So once you are given the task as audit assistants, you have direct responsibility to work on that assigned segment of the audit. Every time you require assistance, you need to seek guidance from the audit seniors and or your audit manager. That's all we need to cover about our organisational structure for now. If you have any questions later on, your audit manager will be more than happy to discuss it with you. Hmm, I can see why the audit manager asked us to review the organisational structure again. Yeah, me too. I think it's so that we can identify different levels of ethical and legal obligations for us and the firm. Yes, that's right. So remember that as you analyse the issues on the Krebel audit, hey, by the way, you can download the proformers for the analysis of the ethical issues as well as the legal liability implications for the auditors and the firm. The proformers are available on our website. <laughs> I think that's it for now. Let's go to work, folks. Remember our audit manager is available if you need further assistance on this task.